Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Natalie Zidane. I remain your host, Shadow Theory 333, and the last match for tonight is going to be between 400 and Google Frog on Eye of Horus, which is a classic map I haven't seen in a while, and it looks like the lighting settings have actually changed a bit for it. More of a sunset thing going on here. Although I might have just forgotten. It's been a while since I've seen this map. Anyway. 400 already going for the Cloaky Bot Factory. Google Frog, no clue what they're going to go for, so... Cloaky's from 400. Makes a lot of sense. This map actually favors bots, despite its size. It really works well for bots. They have very quick glaze coming out. Standard. Ooh, three glaze before... Oh wow, 400 going for three glaze into two warriors. That's... That's a little unusual. Normally you see a lot of glaze coming out, especially on this map, especially given the size of this map. But no, Google Frog is going for more typical strategy, dirtbag into convict into bandit. No surprises there, but yeah, warriors coming out of 400 right away. Not sure if they expect Scorchers coming out from the top and just want to have warriors on queue in case. Because warrior assault, that'll take a while. Really, you've got to be using the defensively on this map for a while. But hey, that might be 400's plan. Just set up a better defense, work that way. Google Frog expanding rather quickly, getting very immediately all three of their starting metal extractors. 400 on the other hand, focusing a bit more on energy before going for the next bit of metal. And first skirmish come in, and 400 wins! Gets first blood! Not the whole game, just that one glaive bandit skirmish. 400 does manage to win that out. Not a huge deal though, I mean, Google Frog will ultimately scout out 400. Google Frog doesn't really know where 400 is, and seems to suspect 400's over in the northwest side of the map, rather than in the northeast side of the map where they actually are. I wonder if they were playing earlier matches before on this map. Anyway, 400, I think they've found... No, they haven't found anything. They have no idea. Okay, now they probably found something. Getting some harassment in. That works nicely. So 400 already a little bit ahead with the harassment. And a little behind on the actual economy, but hey, the harassment works out. That pays off. That's what you want to do with it. Oh, are they going to get the... They are going to get the convict! Or at least they're going to try, but hey, convicts can't really path where glaives... Is that glaive going to follow the convict? Or what? There it goes, that convict. Possibly getting saved by the bandit. Hard... Yeah, that bandit's coming to save the day. Totally going to save the day. There's no doubt about... Why am I not seeing... There we are. So yeah, that could have been a kill. That was a huge kill that didn't happen. Because seriously, a convict in this area too, that would have delayed the expansion by at least two minutes. Because building the convict and then moving it over and starting... This... That is a blow. 400, I'm sure they wish that they'd killed that convict. Because they're fighting... And Google Frog is one of the best players. So dealing with Google Frog requires killing a lot of their stuff early, taking every advantage you can get. Not getting rid of that convict is going to bite them. Now, if 400 plays basically perfectly for the rest of the game, then yeah, they've got a decent chance, but it's going to require that. However, at this point, Google Frog going for some counter harassment, and this is going to be tricky. Nothing, not much in the base, a couple defenders, which will help. Actually, it'll help a lot, come to think of it. Wow, that, that dealt no damage. One radar tower died. That's it. That is the casualty count for 400 there. One radar tower. That's it. Google Frog losing all three bandits. Basically for free. Basically inside of 400's territory. Now I understand the warriors. Now I really understand the warriors. I mean, I did say defensive, and I was right. That's exactly what they're going to be used for. Although it looks like somewhat aggressive defense. That warrior is moving further and further south. We're further and further away from the main base. Not really focused much on defense, but hey... The warrior over in the center, well, the, yeah, the north center of the map. That is going to be doing a much better job actually defending. And by much better job, I mean fully ineffectual job, because it completely failed to stop the bandits from killing either metal extractor. Wonderful failure. Good job, your pink slip is in the mail. Just be glad you're still alive. That aside, there is a conjurer, at least nearby, if it would... It was queued up. 400 didn't quite notice that. But yeah, there is a conjurer nearby, so it can be rebuilt, and there's more stuff being built up. At 400, they're getting way behind economically. Google Frog's commander in the center of the map, just building everything up. 
and this expansion here as well, the one in the southwest that could have been stopped, but was not. So, valiant efforts from the Glaze, but that Lotus is out of range. Which really sucks, because that Lotus is basically stopping the entire northwest side from of the center from being attacked. So, Google Frog, dangerously strong position right now from Google Frog. And not a whole lot that 400 can do without switching off to Rocco's, which would be kind of difficult on this map, given all the bandits running around and given how slow things move. I mean, the map is large compared to unit speeds, so this is hard to do stuff. And the Conjurer, okay, this is death. Google Frog is probably going to move north in a, like, 10 second period, somewhere in that area. And that Conjurer is going to go down. Once that happens, that'll, well, that'll end that expansion to the northwest. I don't know when Google Frog is going to attack there, but when they do, that's going to be dangerous. 400, also way behind on energy. Getting a lot of reclaim, but it needs to build up some energy desperately. They have a few power plants, but I don't think they're noticing that they're e-stalling hard and about to metal access hard too. And it's just not much that can be done. 400 is harassing, but what is 400 focusing on? Oh, they're focusing entirely on setting up their warrior. Not at all really focused on, oh hey, my economy is is going into the tank. Not bad harassment there. I mean, that actually, those defenders I don't get rid of one and a half glaives. That won't actually do a whole lot of damage. These glaives are doing some damage, but at the same time, there's the attack to the northwest. That's what I was talking about. The bandits taking care of the same... Well, the analogous expansion... Okay, the analogous expansion is actually over here. But the point is, they're taking care of an expansion, so 400 not really getting ahead. No real net gain. And they are going to lose three bandits... Sorry, three glaives inside of Google Frog's territory while killing hardly anything. I mean, they killed a few metal extractors. That's good. Reduced the economy a little bit. Didn't actually deal a lot of meaningful damage. And the bandits, completely unscathed. Nothing in the way. No defenses or anything. 400 lost that entire Northwest expansion. And Google Frog with a proxy gunship plant to try to close this out. Because, I mean, what else are you going to do at this point? Looks like 400... Not sure if they're focused more on defending against bandits or potentially defending against banshees. Either way, that Stardust is a good choice, though I'm not sure I agree on the position. I say that because... That's the range. That's it. Like, stuff could end up out here, out here, out here. There's a lot of positions that a bandit could be that would allow them to destroy everything here without getting anywhere near the Stardust. And a Banshee's gonna have an even easier time. Granted, a strafing Banshee, not so much, but just... If Strafe is off in the Banshee, yeah, you're done. The Metal Extractors are dead. Google Frog is going to pay attention to it. They are gonna do everything they need to do to make sure the Banshees don't die. And Rapiers, well, that's even worse. Because Rapiers are the real killer here. I mean, there's gonna be no way the Stardust is gonna kill them. Even if the Stardust was in range, Stardusts don't work super well against Rapiers because Rapiers can just run away or hit and run. Although, hey, some harassment going on. Not sure if it's gonna amount to much thanks to this racketeer over here. But that warrior's effort is valiant. It's been walking there since the start of the game. And now it's going to die. Ignominiously. And unloved. Goodbye, warrior. That was not the warrior that lost its job. That warrior was over here. Was over there. Now it's over here. It's a layabout. It hasn't really done anything. I don't know if it's killed a single unit. I really don't. It certainly hasn't killed its cost in units, but I don't think it's killed a single unit yet. That warrior has been completely useless. It's just been sitting there. And now the rapier's coming in to finish the job. I mean, another warrior. At least that warrior tried. It died horribly, but at least it tried. It gave it its all. But yeah, now this surprise rapier's coming in here. The rapiers who didn't know were blowing everything up inside your base. And like I said, they just kill Stardust. So this this is kind of done. 400 with a decent economy, though. I mean, they could easily fax switch. They have actually added an air factory, so that's good. They have a couple of hawks coming out. Or, yeah, I was right. That is their name. They have a couple of hawks coming out. Might help out against the rapiers, but really the problem is not so much the air force. Because, yeah, the hawks will work. That's fine. The problem is that, first off, they're expensive, and 400 doesn't have a huge economy right now, compared to Google Frog. And second, 400's ground forces are dead. Except for the incompetent warrior here. Which, seriously, accomplish something, will you? Hey, you killed something! Good job! 
You're on probation. But the rest of these warriors here, I mean, the rest of the units in general here, dealing some damage, 400 trying to get some harassment in, but not really able to do a whole lot of meaningful stuff. Man, that warrior are actually starting to do some damage. And over to the eastern side of the map, these two warriors about to die. I mean, really, it's just a lot of warriors, not a lot of anti-air. I mean, it's just Glaive and Hawk at this point. That's 400's entire strategy, which seems very dead-end to me. And the the Incompetent Warrior goes down fighting. At least it did something in its short, in its over-long life. I mean, short life. But it is something. However, at the same time, Google Frog taking the northwest side of the map, because why not? 400's working to stop them, but they don't really have the ability to do so. And now finally the Air Force coming in. The Hawk's doing a massive number, getting rid of all the rapiers. Holy crap, that's... That's actually really quite impressive. I mean, this is what I mean. The Hawks are definitely a choice. They definitely work. Quite well, actually. The lot, they're... I think a couple have maybe gone down? Yeah, a couple have gone down. But still, compared to the cost, compared to the rapiers they're destroying, like wiping out Google Frog's entire Air Force, and Google Frog at this point actually... Losing some economy, those harassment attacks are dealing damage. At this point, 400 and Google Frog, even on economy, the problem, of course, is reclaim. Google Frog taking out units inside of their territory and focusing so much on rapiers that, yeah, the Hawks are doing some damage, but ultimately it's not working out. And the one problem the Hawks are facing, of course, which is one reason I was a little bit uncertain compared to, say, Swifts, Hawks have a really long turn time. So yeah, they come in and deal a ton of damage and wipe out several units and then they go past them and they get knocked about because they get hit from behind. And the rapiers just have homing missiles. Whereas Swifts come in with homing missiles and fire a bunch of lasers and fly around and fly around and fly around and keep firing and keep getting hits in. And this looks like it's probably going to be it. I mean, it's mostly rapiers being helped out here. There's not a whole lot of production going into the Shieldbot factory. A lot of build power going into the gunship plant. And Google Frog getting some reclaim going again, getting their economy back up. More Hawks trying their best, but there just aren't the numbers required to get rid of the rapiers. This is where I really would go for Swifts, personally. I mean, the Hawks are doing a decent job, but consider Hawks cost the same as rapier. I mean, Hawks are definitely cost efficient against rapiers. It's just... just barely. Like, the two are kind of even, and so if the numbers go in the rapiers' favor, well, the rapiers win. And 400 has far less of an economy to work with here. And also, Orphelia is pointing out that the micro of the rapiers is being used to take advantage of the, the hawks, because the turn rate of the hawks forces them in a way that, like, they force them to turn slowly, especially with the slow being used from the rapiers' missiles, and the rapiers can be just set behind them as much as possible. So it makes it even easier for the rapiers to get hits in without getting hit. I mean, that first assault was really strong, took out a lot of rapiers, but it's not enough. And another shot coming in here, the Hawk might be able to get rid of the rapier. But yeah, that's not really going to do the trick. We already just saw there, rapiers making sure to stay behind the Hawks. And the Hawks coming in one at a time. And also, 400 is splitting their money between Air Factory, Cloakybot Factory, and a Strider building a Dante, which I'm not even really commenting on that much, because it's not going to be built up. There's nowhere near enough money for it. There's nowhere near enough focus for it. And even if it is built up, it's not going to matter. 400 throws in the towel. Bit, bit anticlimactic. I feel like there was a lot of units coming out at the start that didn't do much. And that warrior for the defense didn't really do a whole lot. Ultimately, yes, it did die going down fighting. But it didn't do a whole lot when it mattered early on. A lot of economy was lost for 400. And 400 didn't manage to destroy that that convict at the start didn't stop the expansions. Some good harassment in the mid to late game, but not enough. And I still think Swiss would have been a far better option than Hawks against this many rapiers. Okay, so Orphelius making it clear that Hawks do really well against rapiers unless rapiers are microed to take advantage of the Hawks turn rate. Which, in this case, they were. Very well. You can't really do that with Swifts so much. Although Swifts do have the disadvantage of having to hit and run, and then that makes it harder to really get rid of stuff. But yeah, overall, Google Frog just out-expanded 400, got that center really fast, and that was about it. Just had the economic advantage the entire game. When we check the medal right here, medal income, Google Frog had the advantage, except for a tiny little chunk, about two minutes worth. Google Frog had a massive advantage economically, and unit value was relatively even, 
And then Google Frog built this expansion, and then built more expansions, and it just worked really well. I, I contend that that convict not getting killed because of this hill, because they got up this hill, and the Glaze could not kill them, that gave Google Frog all the economic advantage they needed to keep going. Like, if it weren't for that, it would have been another minute or so, 400 would have gotten these expansions, possibly this as well, although, I don't know, 400 was not expanding that aggressively. But, had they expanded more aggressively, they would have gotten all this. Google Frog would have had to rebuild this, so in the time it took, 400 would have had a good minute or so of 5 to 10 metal per second advantage. Which they needed. And probably would have used very well. I mean, they weren't doing too badly, they just didn't have enough money for it to really matter. And they had some good ideas, some, good, some decent strategy ideas, they just didn't have the money. They couldn't execute on it. Now, granted, you could argue that it's really important from a strategic perspective to use the resources you have, but, well, there's only so much you can do, so. Anyway, that was that, so I hope you enjoyed that. That is going to be it for me tonight, so thank you all for watching, and have a good night, everyone.